welcome back to the channel. My name is Diana Kiriko, and welcome to another chapter of I'm Related to Exorcist, the Kamome Academy Experience. Here is chapter 3, Meeting the Family, and also this is them in the anime. Aren't they cute? <laughs> I love them so much. It's my favorite anime family or siblings. They're so cute. Okay, anyway, let's get started. Yugi looked at his phone. 15 minutes until they would reach the ground. His nerves were just now hitting him as he anxiously waited for the end of the flight, his new friend Schmidt finally rejoining the living world after his vomit incident. Yo, Yugi! So it's almost over, huh? He took notice of the male's twitching. His amethyst eyes glanced over at him, a small smile pecking at his lips. Mm-hmm. Almost time. Little bit of bunched up nerves. His leg bounced a little to prove a point. The redhead reach, his, reaches over and pats it, his shoulder. The gesture calms the young male a bit as he relaxes a bit in his seat. Schmidt cracks a stupid grin, half of his face raised into the grin, showing off a canine. Deja vu, you're doing just fine. I was on my way back for, home from visiting my grandmother myself. She refuses to move the stubborn old bag. I told her that I could support her and go to school at the same time, but she's refusing. Yugi looked in awe at the kind young man. He could tell that even though Schmidt was clearly taller than him, that they were the same age. Oh, how old are you? Schmidt looked, who had looked away for a minute to stare out the window, looked back at Yugi with his dual eye color. Oh, I need to fix that. Fifteen, what about you? Yugi pointed at himself, smiling. Me too. Uh, I know I'm kind of short, but I hear most people get taller in high school. Yugi sweats a little. He could see Yami sending him an encouragement gaze, which made him smile. Oh yeah, they do. Don't worry, you'll catch up. Schmidt chuckles as the seatbelt light came on, and the pilot came on to talk about their descent into Tokyo and how the weather was looking there. This is... This is it, Schmidt. Your stomach ready for this? The redhead laughs sarcastically, his hand on his stomach. I think I'll be okay for touchdown. Yo, he just sat casually in between two males, one of them not knowing his presence or existence. The plane returns to the airport as the stewardess opens the hatch as people slowly rise from their seats to get their luggage out of the overhead bins. Yugi watches Schmidt get out of his chair and pull out a lather... <laughs> Lavender duffel bag and a computer bag. Let's go, Yugi. He waved him along as the shorter boy follows him. Now that he was standing, Schmidt was probably 5'5", five five, so a few inches taller than him anyway. Since Yugi didn't know the way through the airport, Schmidt kept a firm hand on the boy's arm to lead him through the bustling airport. Lots of people walking by where their tourist visitors are on business. The freshman looked all over the airport. Uh, was a giant compared to the compact one he had back in Domino. His mouth formed in the shape of an O as he looked around. Schmidt spoke up after he finally got them to an escalator. So you know what your cousins look like. Sadly, Yugi didn't get that information, nor did he think to ask. He shrugs a little. That's okay, I'm pretty sure that they're smart. They'll have a sign with your name on it so you can find them. As you're getting off the down escalator, they walk through a huge hall at the very end was the conveyor belt where the luggage would be dropped. Yugi, however, almost overlooked the trio of blondes standing near the conveyor belt. The tallest of them, he probably stood about roughly Joey's height if he could guess. He wore a half-unbuttoned lime-colored shirt, his collar kind of disheveled like he was in a hurry to get dressed and forgot to look at himself in the mirror. Going with it was dark gray pressed pants and, ba and, black, pa and black flat loafers. The second one who seemed to be closer to Yugi's age was wearing a turquoise shirt sleeve dress shirt similar to a school uniform, which was tucked into his white pants and brown penny loafer tennis shoes. The little girl with a head full of long blonde hair was wearing a cute dark purple coat over an orange sundress and her own slip-on loafers. He could tell that they were talking from the way the second blonde's body expressed itself. I need to go pee. The little girl looked at her older brothers. Yugi looked. Yugi overheard them talking as he got closer and watched them. The second held a pad that had a name on it. Hi, hi, princess. Let's go. The 
The older one took the little girl's hand and was about to... Abby, come on. Stupid cat. And uh, was about to leave when the second grip on the pad slipped and it dropped from his hand. Oh, I'll get it for you. Yugi walked away from Schmidt and picks up the notepad, seeing his name before looking at them. What's up, Yugi? Schmidt got close and noticed the name on the pad with the blonde looking at him. Yugi met two blue eyes handing it back to him. Itoko? Yugi realized he was looking at his second cousin Ko in the face. As the boy, his height grinned wildly, his canines prominent as his eyes light up. Itoko Muto! He reached past the notepad and held Yugi's hand in his. <clears throat> <laughs> Schmidt chuckled. You found him. He passed the shorter boy on the head. I'm gonna head home. Hope to see you at my school, Yugi kun. Jane. The redhead walks up, going towards the doors that lead outside. Yugi looked surprised seeing his new friend take off. See you. He calls after him as the male walks out the double doors. His attention returns to Cole, who had a million watt smile going on. Teru walked up to them, holding the five year old little girl's hand. Konnichiwa, Muto Itoko. I mean, I'm Minamoto Teru. This is my younger brother, Ko, and this is our sister, Tiara. He held out his other hand to Yugi, who grips his hand, smiling. P please, call me Yugi. He stammers nervously, looking at the trio of his lovely new cousins. Soon the conveyor belt behind them makes a sound as the luggage is loaded onto the track for the suitcases. Uh, after about 20 minutes, Yugi was able to get a suitcase off the conveyor belt. Finally, we can go now. Did the rest of my stuff arrive yet? Yugi looked to his cousins. Ko nodded as Teru leads the younger members outside. Tara hanging on to the oldest brother. Teru and Ko quickly locate the car as Yugi puts his bag in the trunk of the car. There we go. Ko finished putting Tiara in her car seat and hops in. Yugi opts to sit up front with Teru as he starts the car and pulls out of the parking lot. So Yugi, since we have to get you set up today, let's show you mine and Ko's school. The freshman looked at his older cousin and perked up. He was very interested in the idea of seeing his new school. What Yugi didn't notice was the confused and suspicious, and suspicious looks his two older cousins were giving each other. Ko nodded and looked down. Teru drove a bit before stopping at a large brick wall and steel gate. Yugi got out of the car and gasped excitedly. Kamome Academy? His eyes light up as he looked at his cousins. You guys come here too? Ko got their sister out of the car and picks her up. Ko noticed Yugi's elated expression and smiled. That's right, your friend was wearing a high school uniform. He was on the plane with you, right, Toko? Ko had a thoughtful look on his face, watching his cousin's reaction to everything. Yugi nodded e eagerly. Schmidt told me that he went here. Oh, that'd be exciting if we were classmates. Teru gets out of the car as they walk into the gate walk into the gate on the opposite side were several large buildings in the front was the main building for the high school students. The middle school students' classes were separated from them. The building itself was grand, so they made it one of the newer buildings. The main building was three levels high with many windows. The color varied between different shades of pink, including the roof shingles. Tara leads them inside, and they walk straight into the front office. Apparently, Ko and Taro had set it up for Yugi to get signed up for school here. After signing the final pages, he himself had to sign. The front desk lady led them to the uniform storage room, where they had various sizes for the uniform. For the men, it included the tie that Yugi saw Schmidt wearing on the plane. Now, a lot of this I added in extra. It is actually not known. In... In... It's not, it's not, a lot of this is not known. I just made this, most of this up. Just keep that in mind. Mm. Yugi got a similar uniform to the one Schmidt wore of a white button down and brown pants with a tie. For the winter, it even included a brown blazer that went with the pants. He learned that he could continue wearing his puzzle to school as long as he stood in his uniform. 
After going over the rules, Yugi got his class his schedule of class 1A. So when do I start attending? He asked the front lady. Front desk lady after she walked them back from the uniform storage. Tomorrow, and since it's Friday, don't expect a lot out of yourself for the first day. Just make sure you get the uniform from your teacher. You get the information from your teacher on what you need for the classes and get it over the weekend. Terry smiled at the lady patting Yugi's shoulder, Yugi's com shoulder comfor comforting. <clears throat> Can't talk for shit. Comforting. Uh, we'll get it all set up for him, Miss Miss Kochi. The woman smiled back at the two brothers as Teru led them out. Ko, I need to stop by the student council office for a second. Keep Tiara with you and show Yugi around while classes are in session. Teru walked off down the hall as Ko called back to him. Hi, Tarani. He turned to his cousin, grabs his hand firmly, and leads him down the hall, his other hand holding Tiara, who was in awe of the giant building. This way is the classrooms. The club rooms are in the other buildings. The bathrooms are on the floors here, but in the old school buildings is on the third floors. The library is also in the old buildings as well. Oh, here's the class you're going to be in, Otoko. Ko showed him the door. You can make sure to remember it for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I got it. So what makes this school so interesting? Yugi looked around the hallway, seeing how interested it looked. With the tile, flooring, and high ceilings, Yugi, Yugi felt Yami's presence next to him as his partner looked around the place as well. He could see the inquisitive nature coming out of the pharaoh's expression. What do you think, Yami? The spirit smiled, looking back at his eyeball and stood next to him. Very interesting place, to say the least. Yami looks around it as they continue walk to walk, co-leading him up to the roof. Oh, you got a view like this? Yugi ran to the edge and looked over. From up on the roof, he could see far and wide of Tokyo and its beauty. He looked in awe at the view. Ko looked at his cousin staring out at the view. Next to him, he could see clear as day, a ghost they'll mostly see through as someone who looked like his cousin. Both he and Teru noticed this back at the airport, but because of Yugi's friend, he couldn't say nothing. Ko and Teru both knew their sister could see him as well. Her eyes had practically been glued to the spirit without Yugi even noticing. Oh, oi, Itoko. Yugi turned to look at his cousin. Ko's kind face was filled with restlessness and confusion. This bothered Yugi. He wondered what could be troubling his cousin. Ko, daijoubu. Ko's teal eyes met his amethyst. Ko looked at the air next to him. Yugi's eyes widened. Ko, you can see him. This surprised Yami. His eyes widened as, as well his mouth the jar. Ko nodded. I couldn't say anything before back at the airport. And Tyranny wanted me to confirm something before. He did something. Who's that supposed to be, Yugi? Is he a bad ghost? Because if he is, I have no choice to get Tyranny to come up here. Yami chuckled. Exorcist. Out of everything, Yugi, you're related to Exorcist. This hit Yugi with realization. His cousins could see the spirit of the puzzle. His cousins could see the dead, see ghosts. Yugi held his head. No, no, Cole. Yami's a good guy. He's the spirit of my puzzle. He's my friend. Cole's face relaxed a bit. So, God. That's what I was hoping, Itoko. Yugi's whole body relaxes greatly. He was so tense that his knees buckled and he slipped on to the ground. Tara, who was a witness to the whole thing, ran up to Yami giggling. Welcome to the family, Yami Itoko. Oh, that's so cute. I can't, I forgot I wrote that. That's so cute. Yami looked down at the little five-year-old, his face a hot mess, as every inch of his face was noticeably red, even his ears. The girls were... <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you. He couldn't look at any of the as he turned his spear body away from the train to hide his rid ridden face. Yugi laughed at his partner's expression. Tiara giggles. She has been holding on to Yugi's uniform for him. Okay, 
After spending some time on the roof, three of them got back down the staircase just as classes started changing for their afternoon schedules. Yugi could hear people greeting each other as he noticed the classroom door was open. The one he'd be inside tomorrow as he took a peek in. His students were being were behind, chatting away as he looked around briefly before Ko's guiding hand got him through the bustling crowd of students. Minamoto Senpai, where where you been? Up ahead was Teru being questioned by some of the younger classmates. Teru gives him a quick answer. Just some family stuff going on. Oh, Ko, how's the situation? Yugi bet he was referring to Yami in his sentence. Ko gave his brother a big grin. It's all good, Teru ni. You finished with your business? The older blonde nods to his brother. Shall we go then? Let's get lunch and head home with to help Yugi Itoko settle in. Both Ko and Yugi cheered excitedly as they walked out of the school. Later, after they got and ate lunch, Teru pulled up to the house. Yugi looked in awe of the amazing place. A double-story pale house consisted of wood planks and several windows. The roof had corrugated waved tiles attached to the main building below another building built above it, and behind it was another large complex. The stone wall built built around the vicinity. Its entrance were through its gate leading to the patio or the single door leading to the front yard. It's quite homey. Yami spoke up for the first time since the roof. Teru acknowledged his presence with a smile as he climbs out of the car. Thank you very much, Yami. Ko quickly joined them at the door after getting Tiara out of her seat. Upstairs is where most of the exorcist equipment is kept. There's also a few guest rooms. Maybe in the future we can have your friends stay for a weekend. How's that sound? Terry walks to the front door, unlocking it and sliding the second door out of the way, letting them inside the house. Yugi gasps at the beauty, beautiful sea green walls with traditional pictures hanging on the walls of the Minamoto's ancestors. Yugi pulled off his shoes as does his cousins, Ko taking his sister's coat off and hanging it in the closet by the door. Ko, I'm going to get Tiara down to rest. Why don't you show Yugi his room? After I'm done, we can start getting your stuff out of the way. Tara walked down the hall to the left. Hi, Itoko. Down on this floor is the bathroom with shower and tub. A door down from that is the washroom with the washer and dryer. The kitchen is straight this way. Plenty of food. We can go shopping if you have anything particularly you enjoy eating. All the rooms are to the left, right here. Tyranny's being closest to the kitchen. Tiara, then mine, and yours is next to mine. So let's go. Ko gr had grabbed Yugi's bag from the trunk while Yugi was in his day staring at the house. The hallway was kind of narrow, but still left enough room in case somebody needed room to walk by. The floor was a rich auburn color. Ko opens the first door on the right. Here we are, home sweet home. Inside the room was the same sea green color with the same floor, but Yugi noticed his rug was spread out. It was a fluffy white rug which helped put the room together. The bed was all made by the side wall just as he went inside. His gold boxes were stacked on each other. His fragile stuff sat on the floor so they were not broken. His desk was put against the window and his dresser case next to it. What? This all... Ama this it's all amazing. I forgot to put that in. His words failed him as Cole helped himself into the almost unnoticeable closet that blended in with the paint on the wall. He opened the door and started hanging up Yugi's clothes, which were hanger bagged so that the hangers were kept on the clothes as he hung the groups of hangers in the closet. Whoever helped you pack made this super easy. In no time flat, the duo was finished with his closet. As Yugi put the last of the four pairs of shoes he owned, he puts in the last of the four pairs of shoes he owned. Just remember to take them to the entryway to put them on. Ko instructed. The older boy nods, nodded, nodded as he set up his computer with Ko. His friends had made labels on the computer plugs for Yugi to be able to hook his computer back up, which Ko aided him with. With the last code in. With the last cord in Yugi's 
in Yugi turns on the computer successful as the screen lights up. I'm going to explain one thing to you guys. I had bad spelling on this thing because I wrote this on my phone. Had no way of getting it enlarged enough so I could read it better. So a lot of the spelling or words are a bit missing, as you can see. I'm not going to bother trying to fix it all right now because it would just make me stop the video too many times. So let's just keep going. Uh, as the screen lights up, Gata, your friends are awesome. I was sure we would have had trouble with that. Co notice an unmarked box. Nah, Itoko, what's this one? You, you noticed it being his dual disc and deck and quickly shoved the box under the bed. Uh, I don't want to talk about that one right now. It's a sore spot. Ko nodded as he started putting Yugi's PJs away in the dresser as the computer finished booting up and a Skype call was trying to proceed. Huh? They're calling already. Yugi clicked the mouse on the call as his, fr his four friends appeared on the screen. Ah, guys! They were all still dressed for school. They must have rushed home to call him. Ko paused, being in the middle of getting rid of some boxes. Nani, nani, itoko. Ko spouted eagerly in Japanese. Ah, it's okay, Cole. Guys, this is my younger cousin. Yugi pulled into frame for his friends to see a surprised and excited Cole who looked over Yugi's friends. Oh, konnichiwa. The blonde Minamoto grins wildly, his canines showing excessively. Hey there, which cousin are you? Taya spoke up first. Ko stood next to Yugi, a goofy grin on his face. I'm Ko. I'm just a year younger than Yugi. His friends all greeted Ko as they introduced him, so... I'm Bakura. Hope you guys have lots of fun over there. Bakura waved at the camera monitor. I'm Taya. It's nice to see a face with the name Ko-san. Taya giggled at Ko's sudden bashfulness at Yugi's female friend. Hey, I'm Tristan. Where's your siblings at? Bring them here so we can see them. Tristan spoke up as he pulled off his brown jacket, trying to get more comfortable at his computer. I'm Joey. I spoke to your older brother on the phone the other day. Bring him here. Joey had a, had a dipshit big grin on his face. <laughs> Cole left the room in seconds, hearing Yugi yell, tearing me down the hall. Yugi laughs hard. Yami even likes them. They can see him, actually. Eh? They all scream. Joey stood up so fast he slammed his knees into his desk and fell backwards. Gah! He was up in seconds, limping as he sat in his chair before it rolled out from under him. They they can see him. No no switching whatsoever. But Kuro was astonished. His jaw slacked. Yugi could only nod at his friend's disbelief. Ko says his family are full of exorcists. That's why they can see him. His friends shook their heads, trying to wrap around the knowledge that Yugi's cousin could see their spirit friend that they couldn't unless him and Yugi switched places. Yugi heard pounding footsteps come back as Teru was being pushed into the room by his younger brother. Hi, hi, Cole. What is it? Teru widened his eyes a little, noticing the four people on Yugi's screen. Yugi's screen. Ah, uh, domo, he said awkwardly. He waved as well as Cole, who seemed just... Leak hyper energy spoke up. Mina, this is my big brother, Tyranny. Tyranny, this is Yugi Toko's friends. Yugi pointed to each person and said their names to Teru as he greets each one. Go, man. I've got some stuff I gotta get back to. Nice meeting you, everyone. Teru backs away from the computer and walks out of the room yawning. Tyranny is always a busy guy. He's a student council president at school. Then sometimes getting exorcist jobs with dad. He sometimes sleep long hours on the weekend or even after he gets home from school. Cole expresses to the groups so that they understand his sudden departure. We'll leave you guys for the evening. You can get some rest for school. Tell us how your first day goes. Joey yawned himself. You know nods and waves bye to his friends as they sign off. He was sure about it that tomorrow would be a very interesting day. I hope you guys enjoyed this chapter. 
Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.